I tried all the settings in Unity to optimize your animator performance, and I even made custom tools to do so. And in this video, I'm going to show you my findings, how to over double the frame rate of your game when it heavily really relies on animators. So right here, we got the worst case scenario for your project. You have almost 2000 animators running and they all run at the same time and performance is atrocious. I'm running on a 3060 and it should not be 33, 34 FPS. So let's get started to optimizing this. Also note, I am not running my custom tool animator LD. So that's just the latest set we're going to use. But first we're going to optimize this in Unity for free very easily. So right now in the scene, we got over 2000 animators and these are set up with two different models, a regular model and a low poly model since, well, games have different models. So I wanted to test that. First of all, we are going to go to the import settings and some models, especially if you get them from online, have some blend shapes. If you don't use them, just disable them and apply. For me, these models don't have blend shapes enabled at all. So for me, this won't be a performance improvement, but it might help you. We're not going to touch any other settings here. Mesh compression could help a little bit, but personally, I haven't found it to help at all in any project. Next, here are the important settings, the rig settings. And these are pretty much the default settings. I think sometimes it does enable the strip bones, but this model is optimized to strip them by default as well. So that doesn't matter that much. The animation type is very important for performance because the default is humanoid. And this means that there's a very certain structure of bones and they have a lot of excess calculations. So for now, we are going to put them at generic. Generic is a lot faster and has less restrictions. And you can still use the avatars in Unity to put different animations on different models if they have the, different, if they have the same bone structure. If they have a different bone structure, humanoid is still required. So if you have some very important characters, that could work. But for now, generic is very fast. Legacy would be even faster, but then you lose access to the animator and some advanced features. And as said at the start, we don't want to lose any features right now. So let's just give this a go and let's see if this already helps the performance. As you can see, that is a decent performance bump. It is now at 44 FPS from 36, 37. So that's between a 10 and a 20% performance boost from just changing the setting. That's quite nice. Let's go one step further. Of course, use the strip bone settings that should be enabled by default. And we're going to optimize game objects. What Optimize Game Objects does, it optimizes the hierarchy right here. So right here you see we have a model and it has all the bones exposed in the hierarchy. And all of this needs to be updated every frame, which can be a bit intensive on the power. Since we are not using any special things for the bones, we can simply optimize them. And then as you can see, it only has the skin mesh. That's great. Let's also do this for the low poly model. And let's see what performance does right now. As you can see, we are already at 50 FPS. That is a huge performance boost from just changing a few settings. And if you don't have a very complex animator setup, this shouldn't impact quality at all. That's really nice. So now we are going to go for the next step and that is in the actual objects themselves. So I made prefabs, which is going to be edited in the scene right here. So I can just edit them here and it should apply everywhere. First of all, for the animator, sometimes it says it kills and still updates the transforms. And you can also mean that if it's off screen, it kills completely. For most characters, I suggest to just kill them completely. If it's a very important character where every movement counts, you can just kill the transforms. But for now, let's just kill everything completely since, well, if it's off screen, why would you even render them? And this one is already set up to kill completely. So that's very nice. The animator LED sub right here is something we're going to cover in a bit. But first, let's just see if this already helps performance if we just make sure they kill if they're slightly behind the camera. Because I know some models are. Seeing the performance, we did drop a few real-time animators. Performance increased slightly, but nothing noticeable since, again, most of these characters are on screen. So the biggest impact are the characters on screen, of course. So now let's dive a little bit deeper. We're going to the skin mesh renderer. Right here, you can change the quality manually. So if you have a character or an LOD, which isn't important, you can put this on one bone, which is slightly faster. On modern GPUs, it doesn't matter that much, but hey, every bit of performance is welcome. So for me, we're going to just leave this at the default since we're going to optimize it later. We already disabled to update the skin mesh while it's off screen, since well, if it's off screen, why would you calculate everything? Again, might be helpful for very important situations and characters, but for this, it doesn't matter. Next, the skinned motion vectors are enabled by default. We are going to disable these. This shouldn't 
have any impact on your scene, except if you m use stuff like TAA or have some custom effects which use motion vectors. So make sure your project doesn't rely on them, and if so, it's safe to dis disable them. We're also, for the low poly model, we're just going to use one bone, since why? Why would we need to update that if it's just far away either way? And with these improvements, well, you don't see that much since most characters are on screen and the motion vectors aren't that intensive and shouldn't be calculated if it doesn't use them. But in general for Unity, I try to just disable everything I do need, so I'm not relying on any Unity culling or systems and just make sure that I actually don't work with it myself. So now the last step is to use a tool that I made myself. It is currently in SIL and it's called Animator LOD. It is a tool which decreases the animation frame times and also the bone count of any animators that are very far away from the camera. Games like Pokemon use this very extensively. I suggest to put it a bit less extensive since it is a visual decrease. But if it's only animators which are very far away, this might improve performance without any real perceived quality since all the models that are up close, you'll still see in full frame rate, full quality. So that's just very nice to do. You can check this out, there's a guide in the description below and I'm not going to make the whole guide again here. But it is very easy to add, you can add it to most projects in a few minutes if you have your prefab set up. But let's just see if this can improve performance even more. You see, we got another almost 10% performance increase from just enabling this and you can't really see the animation quality loss at close. So if I would undo all the improvements we made, the increase percentage is a lot bigger, so it can be up to 40%. But for now, 10% for an optimized scene is still pretty good and that might get your game just above the threshold of where you want to be. So this is how to increase the performance on Unity by 40, 50, 60% if you just use the default settings. So I highly recommend to check the animators in your project if you're running into any performance issues. If this helps, definitely let me know by dropping a like and maybe a comment. The more support I get, the more of these videos I can make. I have a lot more performance topics I would like to cover, but definitely show me some support so I know what to do. Again, I hope you enjoyed and you learned something, and I will see you in the next video.